right guys, here we go. 10 minutes, 10 action figures, and 10 things to love. Kicking it off with Storm Collectibles, Streets of Rage, Axel Stone. Now, why do I love this guy? I mean, come on, just look at him. Storm Collectibles, you know, you, you have to pay a hefty price for them, but then you get your money's worth, namely with the materials used. Sometimes it's nice to just get lots of accessories and you're like, oh, well, that's where the money's gone. But with Storm, you actually feel like the quality of the, the rubber or the plastic, because I, I say rubber because this feels more rubbery than plastic because it's soft. So his clothes move like soft goods, but they don't have that kind of pajama look that a lot of Mezco or even Hot Toys will sometimes have. It looks like the clothes fit the figure itself, which makes such a difference. Throw in a great expressive face, so many different weapons and hands you can have, the flame effects he comes with too, plus the wonderful 90s nostalgia, ah, oh, love it. Yes, Jason Voorhees. I am a big time horror movie fan, especially the hockey mask serial killer from the Friday the 13th series. Hard for me to get those words out there. But I used to work at Blockbuster Video and I would just go through a phase of renting all these movies. Well, as I say renting, I worked there, I just took them home. And this figure is what I think is the iconic look of the mangled Jason Voorhees face from part four, which I think is sort of like the most sort of quintessential Friday the 13th sort of chapter because it's got all the classic traits, the hockey mask, the machete, the, the camp counselors, it's all exactly, and also that kind of sleazy 1980s feel, which is what this is all about. Plus the great bloody machete, different heads as well. Fantastic representation of Jason. You will die. Shao Kahn, the most evil of fighting game bosses. Just, oh, I hated this guy in the arcades. He would destroy all of your change because he would just spam his damn uh, shoulder charge and his uh, sort of energy weapon, harpoon spear at you. Ah, I hated this guy. But also, he looks incredible in action figure form. McFarlane toys have really captured the beautiful kind of, almost I think it's like Chinese armor style that, that he's wearing there with the different textures on here. He's a big chunky guy. The spikes whew, are actually very, very sharp. And the face with the awesome mask. I mean, you can't get cooler than a skull mask and a giant war hammer. Add to that the rest of the textures and the gold and silver. Such an incredibly cool figure. We have now a brand new figure as well. Hot off the press, we have Civil Warrior. And this was one that I really wasn't interested in picking up. I just got him because he's a part of the wave. But now I was so surprised when I took a look at him in hand. You can see that there's so much more going on with this figure than I ever anticipated. From the actual nice kind of texturing on the material here, all the extra detail going on, on the sort of the arc reactor looking thing on his back. He's got this wonderful, a really smooth torso ab crunch as well, which in itself is surprising. Then the eyes itself and the star actually are, because they're a different color, it looks like these are actually glowing from him. That's really, really cool. So a figure that I was planning to just, to just instantly put up for sale, now I'm kind of agonizing over, because you know what? He looks really cool. I don't know what to do with him. Yeah, I'll get you, turtles. Baxter Stockman, straight from my childhood. And look at this guy. And why do I like him so much? Because he's so cute. <laughs> look at this little fly face. He's adorable and so colorful as well. Straight out from the 80s cartoon. I mean, that's why I love the NECA animated line. They literally just lift the designs, make them 3D and Jen charges a huge price for them. <laughs> but they're worth it. Even look at his little mutagen transforming gun with the different animals he can turn people into. But really, it's just the cute factor. It's his little, little, jowly, almost like, like a pug dog kind of bug face, and just the bright red eyes, the little pointy details here. Absolutely stunning, stunning figure. 
Mando. Possibly the best thing to come out of Star Wars since the original trilogy, in my humble opinion. I mean, don't get me wrong, things like Rogue One and stuff were cool, but this, I think, really captured the heart and the feel of the original Star Wars trilogy. I mean, they kind of had a leg up to start with already because you're dealing with the Mandalorian, you're dealing with like Boba Fett, you're dealing with the coolest concepts in the Star Wars canon. So, of course, it's gonna be, you know, sort of starting off, getting off to a good start, but then they actually made a great TV show out of it. Well, I say a great TV show, a very good TV show, I think. But then we capture the likeness of the Mandalorian so, so well with the different armor pieces, the softer rubber here. The helmet itself just looks cool. I mean, it always will do that sort of Centurion kind of vibe, but throw in the wonderful detail on the bullets and the straps and everything else. This is a figure that just, oh, he looks beautiful. I would be lying. If I were to say, I didn't enjoy this very much. Okay, that maybe isn't the exact right quote, I forget, but oh my goodness, how badass was Josh Brolin as Thanos. And this select version, I think captures this wonderful combination of, I mean, clearly it's the modern comic book version, but that modern version incorporates so much of the movie design where it takes his old classic sort of, was it the late 70s he first appeared, I think? It's kind of a, not a campy costume, but a very basic one. And then they take all those elements and just turn it up as far as detail is concerned to make it a really cool contemporary kind of design. The wonderful detailing on the armor and the belt buckles and everything here. The Infinity Gauntlet still just looks awesome. But also his face is wonderfully evil looking with the sneer. Great Thanos. Let's get a little legendary here with a random Marvel legend. We got Luke, Luke Cage? What am I talking about? We got Danny Rand, Iron Fist. I was thinking of the other half of that pair. And this is a Marvel legend figure that maybe doesn't get as much praise as it deserves. I mean, it's a basic body buck. I think it's the pizza Spider-Man, but it, you know, the devil is in the details. I love, love the wash on the hand wraps here that just look like he's been, you know, beating his fists against, you know, Know, some wooden dummies for hours on end and just looks hard as nails. Then you've got the flame effect, but underneath that, we have the flaming fist with, you know, it almost looks like you can see his skeleton underneath there, which is so cool. But then of course, I don't like the, the straight line. So you pop the flame on there, boom. That is an iron fist worth posing. With the lovely sash as well, the great detailing on there too. This is just terrific. I present RoboCop 2. Okay, this is barely an action figure, but I wanted to include him just completely randomly because I love this little guy. A Gachapon machine uh, little creation, or that's where I get them from, Gachapon machines. are Just random little vending machines you get in Japan. You put in 100 yen or so, you twist the dial and you get whatever you're given. And I got Robo Kane, and I lo <laughs> love this guy because he's so hard to get any action figures of. Apparently, the designer, Phil Tippett, intentionally, get the dust off, intentionally designed him to be almost impossible to make in a toy version so that people wouldn't like rip it off. So he made him crazy top heavy, tiny spindly legs, but when it can be done, it looks so much fun. There's like a proper maquette version that's like $2,000. If I win the lottery, you better believe I'm buying that. Sarah Connor. Yes. <laughs> the Terminator, the Tech Noir. Terminator. Of course, anyone who knows me, if you watch this channel for five minutes, you know that I'm slightly obsessed with the Terminator. And this is such an incredible representation of 80s Arnold. The amount of love that goes into the design with these NECA figures, it's just stunning. You see details that you don't even sort of really pick up on in the film itself when it's kind of frozen in time like this. And then you've got the wonderful detailing, all the little studs painted on the back of the jacket. The chain is actually a chain itself. Of course, you've got his fantastic laser sighting. Oh, excuse me, a little bit gassy. Laser sighting pistol there. And then capturing the almost synthetic looking, almost like it's intentional, Arnie face with his wonderful floppy hair there. Just looking so awesome, fantastic figure. 
And there we go, guys. That was 10 minutes, 10 toys, and 10 things to love. Let me know what you thought about this funny little concept. I wanted to do it because it's a quicker type of video to produce. And right now, when I've got a lot on my plate, this is a great way to put out content and sort of keep that connection with you guys and you know give us all something to watch and chat and discuss about without me spending hours upon hours poring over the various editing that goes into the more intense videos because as much as I love doing those I <laughs> there's only so many hours in the day right now but I really want to you know keep up the content keep the the decent quality stuff coming so I don't want to make stuff just for the sake of making it but at the same time, I think this could be a fun format. 10 random figures and 10 things to love about them. So let me know what you think. If you like them, I'll keep on doing them. And until next time, keep displaying model behavior. Chill. Yeah. What would you do if you had the power of a god? What would you do if the gods wanted that power back? This land is a post-apocalyptic reimagining of a world's relationship with its gods and how the future looks to the past to rebuild its present. Kia ora, hello. I'm Mark Abnett, writer-creator of this land. In February this year, over 220 people joined us from around the world to help launch a Kickstarter special edition of This Land Issue 1. We saw Helma, a daughter of Axland, with a mysterious and complicated past encounter an aspect of the god Tane, who has imprisoned her family. Helma must make a Faustian pact with Tane in exchange for their lives, a deal that can betray her people and bring down the walls of an already fragile society dealing with a new world since man's self-inflicted death of technology. In issue 2, we meet a team of mercenaries handpicked by Helma to help lead Tane to find the demigod Maui, considered to be a myth amongst the people who remain. We discover the world beyond the Bombay Gorge, witness the mercenaries in action, and discover new truths how this world came to be, and what happened to the people of a neighbouring tribe and how they became so different to those around them. Gods and monsters will clash, secret histories will be revealed, and the world of this land will be broken. If you're new to this land, no problem. Issue 1 is available as a reward level and as an add-on. Simply select the reward that interests you, and at checkout, you can add a copy of issue 1 to your reward bundle. All five issues of the series have been completed, drawn and inked by Pierre de Delis. This Kickstarter will raise funds for colours and lettering for issue 3. Featured rewards are the opportunity to own original inked art by Hellboy and Venom artist Zach Howard, an opportunity to have a one-on-one -on -one Zoom Comics Masterclass about world building and comics adaptation, which I teach at Glasgow School of Art. Due to demand, we have increased the personalised original sketch rewards from 5 to 10. New Zealand artists Miku Mulapola, Craig Peterson and Leo Artbro lend their talents to exclusive pin-ups. This Land Colouring Book Volume 2 is available, featuring scenes from all five issues. And we have a new Araha Comics pin, without our logo text. And much, much more. This is a Kickstarter that cannot be passed by, and we need your support. Kakiti See you soon.